Can I lose hair during a surgical hair transplant? Surgical hair transplants are a popular treatment to help improve the appearance of mostly men with genetic pattern hair loss. There are certain caveats that people should be aware of when considering surgical hair transplantation. It's obvious that hair transplants are amongst the most aggressively advertised procedures in the aesthetic field. What is not advertised are the many variables which can affect the outcome of a hair transplant surgery. As with any surgical procedure, there are some very important technical factors that consumers should be aware of. There are also non-technical factors which are specific to hair transplant surgery worth knowing about. In the category of non-technical is the fact that hair transplants can be performed by a wide range of surgeons without established standards for competency comparable to other specialties such as cosmetic surgery and plastic surgery. For example, a physician who has not done any residency training in any specialty can still be a hair transplant surgeon. Another unique aspect to the designation of a doctor being a hair transplant surgeon is that oftentimes this surgeon doesn't perform any of the actual procedure, but rather the procedure is performed by technicians. This is why a single surgeon can have several hair transplant operations occurring simultaneously without being present in any of them. Another non-technical variable is that hair transplant surgery consultation is often performed primarily by a sales representative who determines if an individual is a good candidate for surgery without the doctor being present. This form of commoditization, in my opinion, is one of the many reasons for the high rate of patient dissatisfaction with hair transplant outcomes. A technical issue with hair transplant surgery is the variability in hair graft survival. Specific health factors such as blood pressure and medical conditions which can affect healing will have a significant impact on the successful outcome of a hair transplant operation. If the paradigm of a hair transplant practice is to close deals and have scalps and chairs sold by non-physicians or physicians with minimal concern about optimal patient selection, the question, can I lose hair from hair transplantation, deserves some exploration. This doesn't mean that all hair transplant practices are unethical. There are excellent and conscientious physicians who are committed to getting the best results for their patients. I'll discuss some specifically medical factors in hair transplant surgery that can lead to more hair loss and how they can be managed. I'm Dr. Amiya Prasad. I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in New York City and Long Island for over 25 years. I've been performing surgical hair transplants throughout my career. Having experienced challenges with donor site healing and graft survival, about 10 years ago, I used extracellular matrix by A-cell to enhance the healing process of the hair grafts and the donor area incision. I noticed a year after surgery that patients had with thinning hair native that were not transplanted had increased in number and hairs had grown thicker. I spent several years optimizing formulations of extracellular matrix and platelet-rich plasma to develop a standalone procedure to treat male and female pattern hair loss. I also developed my own classification system to categorize individuals by gender, age, age of onset of hair loss, degree of hair loss, and other factors to customize formulations specific to each individual. Essentially, I not only developed a process to stimulate hair growth, but a system to manage hair loss. 
this system I named Trichostem Hair Regeneration. I then proceeded to design and build the first Trichostem Hair Regeneration Center located in Tyson's Corner in Northern Virginia, outside of our two locations in New York City and Long Island. Many of the patients we treat at our three locations are men and women who've recently undergone hair transplant surgery, as well as having had hair transplant surgery performed several years ago. Many people report that they were disappointed by the amount of hair that they actually grew one year after hair transplant surgery. And they often further feel that they actually lost a lot of hair because of the surgery. A technical reason for hair loss during hair transplant surgery is called transection. Transection refers to when a hair graft is divided unintentionally during a procedure like FUE, or follicular unit extraction. In this situation, the follicle is left behind, so the actual root is not transplanted and the hair that's transplanted just doesn't grow. Some of these grafts may be barely intact and also fail to grow. So there's a disconnect when the patient is informed that they had a large number of grafts placed, yet a few of those grafts actually ended up growing. Since many hair transplant practices charge per graft, in the end the patient paid for a lot of grafts, but only a small percentage of those grafts actually grew. Another type of hair loss situation that hair transplant surgeons don't emphasize in consultation with their patients is termed collateral loss. Collateral loss is defined as the loss of native hairs, which are thinning from the trauma of the transplant surgery itself. Many transplant surgeons will rationalize that the native hair was thinning and would have been lost eventually. In contrast, if those native hairs are thickened and saved as we do with trichostem hair regeneration treatment, then every native hair can actually improve scalp coverage. Improving scalp coverage is why hair transplant is being performed in the first place. It's also important to recognize that native hairs actually grow more closely together than is possible to achieve with transplanted hair grafts. This means that Thickening native hairs non-surgically with trichostem hair regeneration can provide more hair density than a surgical hair transplant. So this raises the question, why can't surgical hair transplants be performed in a way to actually match native hair density? Well, this is one of the reasons why people lose hair during a hair transplant. See, surgically placing too many hairs together results in a suboptimal environment to support hair grafts, which results in hair loss. The density of native hair ranges from 50 to 100 hairs per square centimeter. A optimally performed transplant density can't exceed 20 hair grafts per square centimeter. Scalp skin simply just doesn't have enough tissue strength and blood supply for healing more than 20 hair grafts per square centimeter. With trichostem hair regeneration, reactivating and thickening existing thinning hair can easily exceed the density of a hair transplant without surgery. Trying to implant too many grafts in a single session or back-to-back -back hair transplant surgeries is another potential cause for hair loss related to hair transplant surgery. A generally considered safe hair transplant operation with adequate spacing of grafts per square centimeter ranges from about 1,500 to about 2,500 grafts in a single session. Some practices offer something called mega sessions where, where many more grafts are harvested and transplanted at one given time. Although there is potential for successful outcomes, there are specific challenges and the processes of performing mega sessions that potentially can be detrimental to an optimal result. Most hair transplant surgical procedures are performed with only local anesthesia without any sedation other than oral medication. Surgeries typically take several hours and patients often become uncomfortable and restless, particularly as anesthetics wear off 
and they experience pain. This situation invariably results in elevated blood pressure and more bleeding, referred to in the transplant industry as graft popping. Graft popping can result in permanent loss of grafts. In addition, the more grafts that need to be placed, the more stab incisions are made into the scalp. This action can compromise blood supply and cause more inflammation, resulting in poor graft survival. I've seen patients who, after a mega-session transplant, lost 90% of their hair grafts. It's important to understand that surgical hair transplants do not treat progressive hair loss. It's common for many men to think that once a hair transplant is done, so is their active management of hair loss. Hair does continue to progressively thin after transplant surgery if no other treatments are initiated. By ignoring this fact, native hair will continue to thin around the grafted hairs, which were taken from the permanent zone, leaving a sparse and artificial looking appearance. In FUE surgery, a lot of hair grafts are actually taken from outside the permanent zone. So these hairs are just as prone to thinning as native hair in the scalp and crown. A DHT blocker like finasteride can help slow progressive hair thinning for men. Trichostem hair regeneration can be used to thicken thinning hair and to stimulate the growth of dormant hair follicles adjacent to the transplanted hairs, making the density look more natural and increasing scalp coverage overall. In fact, even transplanted hair can diminish in density. I've used trichostem hair regeneration to treat areas where there are no more native hairs and only transplanted hairs. After our treatment, there was actually an increase in the number of transplanted hairs growing in an area where fewer transplanted hairs were visible prior to treatment. Hair transplants are commonly perceived as the best treatment for genetic pattern hair loss. But when you understand the limitations of a hair transplant, it makes sense to consider optimizing existing hair maximally before pursuing surgery. We've seen with more than 10 years of experience that by reactivating the hair growth of dormant hair follicles and thickening hair that is thinning, the results of trichostem hair regeneration can far exceed the results of one and even two hair transplant surgeries in the right candidate. This doesn't mean that hair transplant is no longer relevant, but rather that hair transplant is not the best first option in the management of hair thinning. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for your question. Thank you.